due to Nigeria's large population, the country is routinely tagged one of the leading African countries in human trafficking with the highest rates of cross-border and internal trafficking. Despite concerted efforts by the government to curb the menace through stiffer laws and policies, the criminal act is on the increase and has become a major security concern to the nation. To shed light on the new approach the government has deployed towards curbing these threats to national security is the Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, Hajia Iman Sulaiman Ibrahim. Hello and welcome to Break It Down, where we make matters of policy, societal issues, governance and development easily understood by all. Today we are speaking with a very, very special Nigerian, a woman who is working so hard, a woman who does not sleep just to ensure that our society is free of human trafficking menace. She is the Director General of the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP. I'm talking about the very beautiful Hajja Iman Suleiman Ibrahim. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Moji. Yeah, I would like to first congratulate you on your new appointment. Well, it's not really new now, but uh, it's not too long we were appointed uh, the GG NAPTIP. Tell us about NAPTIP. Let's start from the basics because this is breaking down. First of all, I would like to thank you, Muji, and welcome you to our headquarters. Secondly, I'd like to commend you and applaud you for the work that you're doing mm -hmm. to ensure that the society is more strengthened. So talking about the NAPTIP, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons is the agency of government that fights human trafficking and also helps to fight all forms of crimes against persons and all forms of human degradation. We're also the custodian of the VAP Act. Yeah. The Violence Against Persons Act uh, that was, that was um, enacted um, in 2015. Not many people know about the VAP Act. Uh, when you say VAP Act, people are like, what is it? What exactly is the VAP Act? The VAP know some states have domesticated, some have not. Yes. We've always had laws to safeguard people, but the VAP Act is a more, com com uh, more enhanced act that covers a lot of gaps that the other um, acts do not cover, like the Child Rights Acts. Can you tell us more about NAPTIP? <laughs> okay, NAPTIP, like I said, is the agency of government that fights human trafficking. So human trafficking has different sides to it. It's an evolving crime that keeps manifesting in different forms and shapes. There's a misconception that human trafficking is just what happens between a certain state in Nigeria and a certain part of you know, Europe. But no, human trafficking is endemic in every state. There are different kinds of human trafficking. We have the internal types and we have the external types. The internal human trafficking would um, be cases around domestic, um, sorry, um, domestic servitude. Um, the Almajiri program is also a form of human trafficking because these kids are being exploited. We also have the issues of baby sale, the baby factories. We also have the internal forms of human trafficking being the underage sexual ex exploitation. And we also have the external elements of the human trafficking, which are the sexual exploitation, the forced labor, the labor exploitation. We have the, the, the recently manifesting, strongly manifesting um, organ harvesting form yes. of human trafficking. So, so organ uh, harvesting is human trafficking? It is human trafficking. Uh, sometimes because just, it's the sale of body, body parts. Yeah, sometimes we wonder why is this now a problem? It's, it's, it's like it's becoming endemic human trafficking in our, in, in, in our country. In the past, we had people who came to take us by force. Now it's like we're submitting ourselves to, to traffickers. Let's I think, talk about the external trafficking now. Yeah. I think uh, while, while the, 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 the biggest misconception is thinking that slavery ended because it never ended. Because while we were sleeping, we being relaxed, our communities are turning into recruitment grounds and our citizens are becoming commodities. 
Human trafficking is purely slavery. It's not even modern day slavery, it's slavery. Being one of the most lucrative global enterprise that exists, what almost 150 billion, it's gaining strength. Wow. And hence the need for the call for you know, stronger collaboration, for concerted efforts. If you watch my activities on assumption to duty, I've been going around trying to highlight areas of convergence between the NAPTIP and all the law enforcement agencies and other organs and of government to ensure that we're, fight, we're strengthening our response as a country and we're fighting for, for impactful results. There are laws um, protecting yeah. victims. There are laws that should enforce the, the, the crime, that should punish the crime, that should implement mm -hmm. and all of that. Yeah. Is it that laws are not enabling right now? It is enabling. That is the Trafficking Act, the, the TP Act of 2015. We are in 2015. Are they enough? It's, um, you know, when, you, when it comes to laws, you have to keep reviewing to ensure that you address gaps. Because like I said, this crime is evolving. It doesn't just come in one phase and then that's it. No. It, it keeps manifesting in different forms. Hence the need for research and, you know, anal um, analyzing our data and then translating in the right manner so that there's proper, you know, data data um, analysis to ensure that we're, we have our homegrown solutions and our tailored fit intervention. NAPTIP is backed by an act to ensure that we have a training academy. It, it, is, it is a major focus for this administration of NAPTIP to ensure that the academy is in place. We have our training um, resource center that is ensuring that we train and retrain staff to be able to respond better. We we'll, we'll also have a, a research center and that is where uh, you know, all the findings we ensure um, they're, they're, being tailored towards, they're being tailored towards ensuring that we strengthen our legal framework, we, we strengthen our act. Uh, wait, let's look at domestic <laughs> trafficking now. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is something that goes on even in, in, in our neighborhoods. Yeah. We see it every yeah. day. Um, in case someone is involved, mm -hmm in domestic trafficking or you know somebody who is involved in domestic trafficking, mm -hmm. how does um, NAPTIP come in? Okay, first things first, we have the, uh, our hotline 627, when you dial 627 from every network, you get through to the NAPTIP call center, it's 24 hours. So we're being able to respond immediately, accordingly with the type of um, crime and with the status of the case. So we've been able to kind of initiate action from arrest if there's a need to do that, to rescue of victims if, if it's, it's also required, and then we initiate investigation. We conduct a prosecution-led investigation to ensure that we have a strong case when, 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 we, when, we, when we litigate and to ensure that we kind of get justice for the victims. And we have a strong victim support program that we're trying to strengthen yeah. to be in line with global practice. Mm. Like I tell you, the fight against human trafficking in Nigeria, you know, has is as old as 17 years yeah. since after the the the, the mm. In 2003, we came home and we have a, an agency. So we should congratulate ourselves as a country that we have a response. We just have to continuously work on strengthening our response to ensure that we're responding stronger and we're dealing with the root causes, not only consequences. Wow. Well, we'll take a break now. When we come back, we'll still be talking about domestic trafficking uh, before we go into other issues. And moreover, the people out there would want to know about protection, the victim protection and uh, even witness protection yeah. programs of NATIP. Uh, we'll be back. Just stay tuned. Trending and current issues. The COVID-19 vaccine is a blessing from my own point of view. The NGOs have a role to play. Government policies. Would you agree that the government is proactive enough? I think they are. The what plan. is your opinion? We need to do more. The training of women goes beyond rhetorics of government and concrete action. NGO welfare programs that directly affect the average Nigerian home and the common man in the language that is easily understood by all. It doesn't matter that the legislative arm and the executive and should be at logger head to show that there's checks and balances. Yeah, is the checks and balances they ask. Every Wednesday at 6 30 p.m. on this station.
And you still unbreak it down and we're still with the very cerebral, very beautiful, very brilliant Hajja Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, the DG Naptip. So Thank we're talking much. about uh, domestic trafficking mm -hmm. and um, all the, because it is just all over the place. Like every other house, there's, there's, there's a case of trafficking or mm -hmm. abuse. Mm -hmm. How do we identify this if it's close to us? It's very easy to find, to, to highlight victims because of the nature of the crime. It, um, it's, um, it comes with a lot of exploitation. And it, you know, you, you kind of sense that somebody is in danger, there's a lot of fair factors around it. So it's very easy to highlight some, a victim of trafficking that is in their need of help. Hence, my, my call to everybody in the society to join this fight against human trafficking because these traffickers are not ghosts, they are not um, spirits, they live within us. It's very important that we pay attention to our society, we be our sister's keeper or our brother's keeper to ensure that we collectively stamp human trafficking out of society. And as an agency of government, you know, with the, with the powers that we have, we're ensuring that we're strengthening our structures and our systems. Presently, 17 years later, after inception, we don't have the right kind of coverage. We're working strongly with the state government to complement the federal government efforts in establishing the right kind of structures, the right kind of shelters across the country so that we're in a very strong position to respond to this evolving crime that is gaining strength. Yeah, let's talk about victim protection. Yeah. Because what people say, like yeah. women who are abused, for example, yeah. or why women send their children, parents yeah. send children yeah. to people they don't really know, they don't really ch even check up on the children, yeah. is because they do not have anything to fall back on. Mm -hmm. There is no shelter, there is nowhere to go to, there is no intervention for them. Yeah. Um, but I learned from you that mm -hmm. there, there are shelters mm -hmm. and there are intervention programs. Please, can you tell us more about this? Okay. So you spoke about two things. You spoke about the domestic servitude form of human trafficking mm -hmm. and you spoke about victim support. So I'll take them one at a time. The domestic servitude um, form of human trafficking is one of the core types of internal human trafficking in Nigeria. We are backed by the regulation 2019 to regulate the aspect of human trafficking. We are still fine-tuning our operational um, structures. So in a, in, a, in a very short while, we will, we will roll out the plan to the public to ensure that Yes, you can have house helps, but there are regulations by the federal government to ensure that everybody is safe, everybody is covered, and there's no, there, there, there are no elements of abuse around the domestic service um, industry. Secondly, you spoke about the victim of trafficking um, protection. protection plan. So our victim protection plan in Nigeria is simple. It starts with identification. We have an identification protocol in place that has been cemented. So when you we identify you, we profile you, that helps us to kind of highlight or um, decide on the right kind of you know, intervention you need, the right kind of counseling, because the victims come, come, come to us with a lot of traumas coming from different, you know, different places. So with, with that profiling, we kind of highlight the kind of help you need, and then we begin to initiate your, you know, your rehabilitation. We counsel, we settle you into our shelters, we have very low capacity when it comes to shelters. We, presently, we just have 10 shelters across the country. Oh, so we're working okay. on having shelters in every state and also the right kind of shelters that are relevant to the victims and scenarios oh. because we have different kinds of categories of victims. So once you're settled in the shelter, then we begin your rehabilitation programs what, what? towards education, empowerment, yeah. and also you know, counseling oh, okay. to ensure that you're back to a level whereby you can be able to integrate into society and get value and also add value. Well, I, I just talked about uh, a scenario I witnessed now. Yeah. I don't know if you can discuss it because it's kind of sensitive. No, no, it's a not child. sensitive. People must know that, yeah. you know, everybody has a role to play when it comes to protecting ourselves, when it comes to, you know, dealing with the causes mm. of human trafficking. A while ago, we, we, you know, we, 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 due to our intelligence gathering activities, we were able to highlight that there were, there were children, um, children being stolen 
from the Sulejia Tafa axis. We were able to d recover six of them. A few weeks ago, we were, we were able to reunite five of them with their families after a lot of investigations and, um, you know, work. Our, our operatives put in a lot of work to be able to investigate the cases and then find the families of five. But one child was still remaining in our shelters since the last two months. We've been unable to trace her family. So a few weeks ago, we found the families. But unfortunately, we had a challenge because the girl was stolen when she was two and a half and a half years old mm -hmm. now she's about eight she doesn't she's lost her identity she can't speak the language she has a new name she can't even identify her parents so she's refused to go with them so we're still in the process of counseling hopefully today the parents are here she might be able to go home with them if she agrees if she doesn't we we'll give her an, enough recovery time until she's willing to go home with her parents otherwise she'll be well protected under our care I just ask how emotionally strong you are. It is emotional. So some some of these cases, you know, can make you just break down in tears. I know. How do you guard your yourself psychologically? The more of this you see, when I assumed duty initially, I could hardly sleep. Mm -hmm. But I think now I'm beginning to sleep because I know that it's become a normal part of our lives. Mm -hmm. It you know after we 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 kind of um, finalize these cases, it gives us a lot of self self actualization. You know the 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 satisfaction we get from ensuring that we solve these problems is what gives us a very strong resolve. Mm -hmm. It's what strengthens us as, as, um, as, pre, as, as um, officers. And that's what pushes us to do more, to ensure that um, we're, we're, we're intervening and we're fulfilling our mandate to the best of our ability. That's awesome. Let's talk about witness protection. Yeah. A lot of people really want to report. Yeah. Some do not know where to report to. Mm -hmm. And some are too afraid to report for, for, for fear of their identity yes. being um, uh, revealed. Okay. What protection do you have for people? We have 100% like blowers. We have 100% protection for whistleblowers. We have informants. We have sources. We protect them 100%. We don't, we do not disclose until if we are consent and if necessary. That's one. Mm. Number two, you can report through various mediums. At the end of this interview, I'm going to flash. We're, we're, we're both going to flash the red card. Okay. It has all the tall numbers. But the, mm. easily, easy, the, easily, the, easy, the easiest way yeah. to get an active is through the 627 number. 627. It's live, it's active, and it's 24 hours. Once mm. you just dial 627 from any network in, the, in, in this country, you're going to get through straight to our call centers. Okay. We, have, we have a team there working 24 hours They'll be able to profile you based on the case you have. And immediately, we have the, NAP, the NAPTIP Rapid Response Squad that will swing into action. They do rescue and um, arrest 24 hours as well. And we also have our team of investigators and operatives that would also give the NAPTIP Rapid Response Squad support when they need it. So you can report the also to the... The number again is 627. Six six and also you can report through the... We have the I report. Okay. We have the Tokam app. We have a lot of apps, mm -hmm. and everything is on our website. Okay. You can, we, also, we also have other numbers, tall numbers that we're going to flash mm -hmm. at the end of this interview. They're all on the red card. And you can also email us at info.naptip.gov.ng. At info.naptip.gov.ng. Do yes. not forget that. That's our email. And also on our website, there's like a questionnaire you can fill in. The reports come straight to us. So there are different ways you, could, you can reach NAPTIP and also we're perfecting on having an additional medium whereby you can easily get through to our NAPTIP staff for mm. prompt response and quick, quick support. So what are the major challenges you face at NAPTIP? Just like every agency of government globally, you know, there's always challenges because you're evolving as an agency, you're growing and also with, our, with the evolving nature of our crime, we have to keep reinventing ourselves to fill in the gaps. Post-COVID, there's hardly any resources for anything. But um, our agency's priority, we're pushing and ensuring that the challenges we have become an opportunity for growth, growth in the right direction. So we have a lot of operational challenges and also administrative challenges, but we're working on perfecting and strengthening response. So how do you think we can identify victims? Um, no, uh, human traffickers. That is, people who are capable or people who are already trafficking. How do people identify them so they don't fall into that trap? 
once once we know the what what uh, what the forms of human trafficking is, it's very easy to identify traffickers. The easiest way is when you see questionable wealth. There's a lot of money involved in human trafficking. So when you see somebody of questionable character, of questionable wealth, wealth that cannot be dis explained or traced, there is a, there is the proceeds of crime. So it's what reported so that we can investigate. Mm -hmm. And also when you see people with very very unpredicted and funny mode of operation, trafficking is a trafficking a tra trafficking business is an organized crime. We have cartels. Mm -hmm. So when you look closely in society, you find people that easily can be can be um, potential traffickers. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is to report. When we investigate, if if if, if you're not a suspect, we let you go. Okay. But s report every suspected person or any su suspected activity. Mm -hmm. We'll look into it and we'll give justice to whom justice is, is due. And for those who are already trafficked, yeah. who are already in that situation right now, who mm -hmm. do not know what to do, whose phones have been taken from them, especially those who are trafficked yeah. uh, abroad, internationally, mm -hmm. what is your advice? And how can parents stop falling into that trap of saying, I want to take your child abroad, or even the youth themselves, submitting themselves to slavery? Yes, I know we have economic needs. Yes, I know that sometimes there are gaps when it comes to knowledge or, you know, availability of information. As an agency, we're going to embark on an aggressive and disruptive awareness and public sensitization in every nook and cranny of this country shortly. But for the parents, they have to be on alert. All their glitters is not gold. Mm. They, should, they should be able to identify the red flags from afar. When somebody who you can clearly see is struggling comes to offer you heaven and earth, you should know that uh, nobody has ever made money from illegal migration. They are legal means of, you know, leaving one country to another to explore or to be adventurous or to learn or even for even, um, you know, a better life. There are legal ways of doing it. But once you go the legal way, once you, you're sponsoring or funding your child to cross the oceans and cross the deserts, know that nothing good can come of that. No victim has ever made money from human trafficking. The people that actually make the money are the traffickers. Wow. So let's be aware. Collectively, we can, we can stamp out human trafficking from our society. Okay, let's quickly look at uh, the security situation in the country. How does human trafficking play a role in all of this? All these crimes are interrelated. All, the, all, all these organized crimes and serious crimes are interrelated. It's a trigger from economic needs. Mm. The government has a lot of um, ec economic empowerment programs in place. Let's ex explore, let's be patient, and let's key in. And let's put hands together to ensure that, uh, you know, we duplicate ourselves in the right direction. We contribute to nation building. Because we together, we are stronger, and together we can be able to rebuild this nation. Okay, do we have people being punished for this crime right now? So far, we've had almost about 600 convictions as an agency since wow. inception. And the SGBV cases, we have 11 convictions as a country. 10 of those convictions were gotten from the NAP tip. And out of the 10 convictions of the SGBV cases, two of them were life in prison. In prison, in imprisonment. So would you say that it's not severe enough? So you see, as a country, we're getting there. Mm. I would like to use this opportunity to thank the legal institutions, you know, the judges and our prosecutors for all they do to ensure that they bring, you know, the traffickers to book and they get justice for the victims. We're going to intensify on our, on our prosecution and we're going to also strengthen our acts, like I said, to ensure that we send a clear message to the criminal minds that, we, that this government has zero tolerance for any form of abuse on human. It's man trafficking. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. But quickly before we go, can you uh, advise young ladies out there, young girls who want to be like you in position of leadership mm -hmm. in future? Mm -hmm. Can you give them a word of advice, please? My word of advice to girls out there like me and women is just to, to have a clear vision of where they want to be and to find out their why. Because your why will always make a way for you. You don't compete with anybody. You run your own race. Everybody has their timings in life. But once, once you stay the course and you, you hold on to your resolve, you're going to get there. The most important thing is not being in a certain place, is being able to add value. Do not look at the money sign. Trust me, when you do the right things, when you find a need and you feel it, when you find a problem and you solve it, 
everything's going to fall in place. Mm. It's, not, it's not easy, but it's worth it. You just have to manage your time, delegate. I know that as, a, as, as mothers and as women, you know, you wear too many hats. Yeah. But you just have to learn the art of prioritizing. You prioritize at every given time and you zero in, in whatever is a priority at that time so that you can be able to achieve results. And trust me, one woman can, one woman did, and that woman is you. Yeah. That woman is you. Yeah, that, that woman, woman is you. Is that me. woman is me. Yes. Thank you so much. I wish we could go on and on. There are just so many questions to ask you. Perhaps I'll come for a personality interview later right? on. You're welcome. Anytime, Moji. <laughs> thank you Thank so you for much. all you do. Thank you for your work. Yeah. And thank you for being a woman of excellence. And again, the, the, the call, if you have a distress call, to NAPTIP 627. Just make that call. 627 and then... Yeah. <laughs> you get and help. You get help or help for somebody. Thank you very much for yeah. watching the show Break yeah. It Down this week. So we've been discussing with Haja Iman Suleiman Ibrahim, DG Nati. See you next week. This is Break It Down. <laughs>